everybody welcome back to minute on the mountain it is november 11th veterans day so thank you to all of you who have served our country uh, both those that are currently serving and those that have served i'm up here hanging some trail cameras i had a company send me a trail camera they asked me to do a review on that'll be on another video but since i was coming up anyway i'm in this area where where i deer hunt a lot where jordan and i just uh, had her tag and I see rabbits up here fairly often. We've harvested some cottontails up here. So I'm gonna do a little rabbit hunt, a little bit of a shed hunt, mainly just get out and enjoy the day. It's, it's absolutely beautiful today. I think the high is gonna be 48, 45, 48, something like that. Cool enough that hopefully I'm not sweating like crazy on the hike, um, you know, but warm enough, I'm not miserable. So if we see any sheds, if we see any rabbits, I'll definitely let you know. Thanks so much for coming along, guys. Four deer right up there, just at the top of the hill. I don't know if you can see the one silhouetted looking at me. I think the one staring at me now is a buck. It's hard to tell because it's through the trees. I'm gonna push up towards him, see if I can get him to move out in the open where you can tell if it's a buck or not. Try to do that without busting my rear end. The ground's still frozen, so it's slippery. Yep, it's a buck. Two point. There it goes. Past those rocks now, if you can see the rocks. He's gonna come out to the right of them, behind him. If you guys watched my polar plunge buck video, which is the buck I harvested a year ago. Who, excuse me, I'm out of breath, this is steep. This is where he was standing. And I was down right at the edge of that bowl. So you can see the water behind it. So as I mentioned, that shot was far back. It was not a good shot. So he looped around on the top and then all the way back down to that water before I finished him off. Thankfully, I could see him the whole time and we watched him bed down. And then after he got up from that bed, we could follow the blood trail pretty easily to the water, but it was crazy. Almost at the top. Just got a little bit more to go. It's another little buck below us, a little spike. And then that's a doe straight across. I would imagine that two points over there with him somewhere. I didn't bring my binoculars because I'm using the chest mount. And I wear a chest harness for my binoculars so they just get in the way. I want to show you guys this dead buck that Jordan and I saw on her on her hunt, but the GoPro, the batteries had died, so I didn't get any footage of it. It looks, I'm guessing it got shot in the archery season based on how much it had decomposed then. I mean, it definitely was after the winter. This isn't winter kill. Coyotes have been hammering on it pretty good since I was up here last time. That's too bad. It's too bad that they couldn't recover it. It's stinking pretty good. I'm not gonna get down in it and mess with it. But it's a three by four. You can't, the four is kind of buried in that little piece of sage, but it happens. I mean, I'm not, I'm not being critical of those guys. You do everything you can to recover, but sometimes you just don't. You know, you make a bad shot. Can't find the blood trail. So anyway, 
we're almost in the little bowl on the top and I'm gonna work my way over to the rocky ledges. That's where the rabbits typically are. Haven't seen any sheds. Just saw that one herd of deer that had the two different bucks in it and about four does with them. So we'll kind of head over here and I'll still look for sheds, but this was the place, you know, the first part of this hike was more the shed hunt and then we get over here to these rocky ledges and these cedars. That's where I typically see the rabbits. So we kind of shift from sheds to rabbits, although obviously we look for both. I didn't know there was a season on ants. But if there is, I guess somebody was successful. <laughs> I worked that area along the cliffs where we have seen cottontails in the past. It looks like my jinx is still continuing. <laughs> I didn't see any. It's weird to me, that's not the area I would expect to see rabbits. You know, I'd expect them in the bushier, more overgrown stuff. So you're probably wondering why'd you go up to the rocky cliffs, but that's this is where we've always seen them. We've harvested a few up there over the years during the deer hunt. But Anyway, now I'm going to kind of get back into shed hunting mode as I work this sage flat and drop down to the truck. And I might stop at one other little pocket and work through it on the way out. It's been a beautiful day though. Man, couldn't ask for a prettier day. So if we find a shed or harvest a rabbit, that'll just be icing on the cake. Well, the first part of this video was recorded on November 11th, as I mentioned earlier on Veterans Day. And it is December 13th or 14th, <laughs> so it's been a while since I edited it and added the Minute on the Mountain and the channel shout out. Just been really busy, so I apologize. I know it's been a couple weeks since I've put anything out. I do want to finish the video with the Minute on the Mountain and the channel shout out. The channel that I want to shout out tonight is DC Outdoors. Uh, Dan over at DC Outdoors has a great channel, hunting, fishing, camping. He does some gear reviews. He does a lot of MRE reviews with his snack squad, uh, with his kids. Those are some of my favorite videos. Uh, his son harvested his first deer this year. Harvested, I remember, pretty sure his first pheasant. Uh, just, just a lot of cool videos, a lot of special times. I'm sure a lot of great memories made with him and his sons this year. So I'll put a link in the description, but check Dan's channel out when you get a chance and tell him Minute on the Mountain sent you. The Minute on the Mountain tonight does come from 1 Timothy. I, I think I've caught up. I don't think we've skipped any books as, a, as we've done our little tour through the Bible. So 1 Timothy, and we're in chapter 1, and I'm going to read verses 15 through about 17 for you. So Paul writes this. He said, Here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the worst. But for that very reason, I was shown mercy so that in me, the worst of sinners, Christ Jesus might display his immense patience as an example for those who would believe in him and receive eternal life. Now to the king, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Paul didn't have amnesia. <laughs> Paul knew what a horrible sinner he was before he was saved by Jesus Christ. I mean, he was, he was a religious terrorist. He was arresting people, he was writing them up, he was having people killed for following Jesus, and yet God used him in a very powerful way so that God would receive the glory. And one of the things I so appreciate about Paul, again, he didn't have amnesia, he didn't forget the horrible things he had done, but he didn't wallow in them. He seemed to have peace in it. You know, God, when he forgives us, says that he removes our sins as far as the east is from the west. And yet so often, you and I want to pull them back on. 
We want to carry around guilt and shame and condemnation. And there's no need for that. God has removed those. So we may have been one of the worst sinners, just like Paul was, but when we put our faith in Jesus Christ, the Bible says we are a new creation. We've been going through an Advent series at church, and last week I, I spoke on peace. In fact, I'll put a link in the description to that video if you want to watch that. But I talked about peace with God, peace with ourselves, and peace with others, and there really is a chain effect there. You can't have peace within yourself if you don't first have peace with God. But Jesus came that we might have peace with God. The Prince of Peace came so that you could have peace with God. And once you have peace with God, you can begin to then have peace with yourself. And once you have peace with yourself, you can have peace with others. Uh, so I hope that in this Advent season, you would experience peace that the Prince of Peace came to give. Thanks so much for coming along today. Appreciate all your guys' support. And we'll catch you next time right on the mountain.